Well, greetings, viewers and voyeurs. Got that funk here. I'm the son and the grandson of fire chiefs. Uh, and although I didn't take it up as a career, I was a volunteer fireman for almost four years when I was uh, a young man. Uh, and both my father, well, my dad, my stepdad, and my grandfather, um, who were fire chiefs, really, really, really believed that they were public servants, you know, that the, part of the reason that they wanted to do that for a job was because they wanted to serve their community and their government. And, you know, they th thought it was a responsible sort of noble ambition to be a fireman. And I've also met teachers who feel the same way. I've been taught by a few of them when I was growing up. And um, my favorite teacher when I was uh, a, a young man, I suppose, because I was in high school at the time, was my science teacher. Now, I took a total of, I think, five science classes throughout my high school years, and four of them were taught by Mr. Conroe. Now, if you had gone to my high school and you heard me say that Mr. Conroe was my favorite teacher, you probably would think I was nuts. He was universally reviled by almost everybody I know who ever had him in class with maybe one or two exceptions and those would be the eggheads you know um, the straight A students now although I got A's on my exams uh, all the time in high school I was not a straight A student because I used to refuse to do homework um, just out of pure arrogance but um, anyway in Mr. Conroe's class there was a, a quiz every single Friday without fail and um, the uh, the reason I liked him so much as a teacher and was pretty much mostly the same reasons other people didn't like him because he was pretty strict now you know I could handle strict uh, as long as it's not rude and that's exactly the kind of strict that he was he was just extremely blunt and I remember because I sat through it for four different classes over the course of my high school years I had to sit through his sort of opening speech to new students um, which would basically, I mean, I can't remember it verbatim, you know, it's more than 30 years ago, but it would basically be along the lines of, look, you're here to learn, so I'm here to teach. And if you have questions, I want to hear them, but before you ask a question, don't call out my name, simply raise your hand and wait for me to call upon you. Uh, there will be no talking in this classroom unless I call upon someone to speak who has raised their hand. And if you are speaking and you haven't raised your hand, you know, you're going to end up getting, basically you had to write sentences. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> like, so it was one of the, it was, you know, it was pretty strictly run. I mean, you know, there, you couldn't get away even with whispering to the person sitting next to you. There was none of it. I mean, you, you had it if you tried that. Now, I, did, I wasn't that kind of student, really. I didn't uh, gossip during class or anything like that. But I found that kind of interesting, that stuff like that is the reason it pissed everyone else off when his classes were actually the most interesting in high school because he did encourage us to ask questions. Now, when I was uh, in school, right from the very get-go all the way through school, I took the whole raising of hands thing a little bit, probably a little too seriously because I was sort of told when I was really small that if you know the answer to something, you raise your hand. So I was raising my hand all the time because I usually knew the answer. Um, but when it came to this classroom where you could ask lots of questions, um, boy, I was raising my hand even more. And Mr. Conroe both loved me and hated me, I think. Um, I had to write sentences a few times, but mostly it would be for calling his name out without raising my hand first. Or, you know, uh, sometimes I would go like that <laughs> when he would say or do something and that would get me in the shit. Um, but getting in the shit wasn't really important. His classes were the most interesting because you could ask the questions and he was incredibly knowledgeable about his subjects. I took him for meteorology, I took him for two different years of geology, and I took him for uh, astronomy. And uh, it was absolutely, without a doubt, the high points of my high school in terms of how much I enjoyed being in class. I didn't even mind the quizzes every Friday, you know. I tended to get good grades on tests. I just didn't do homework, you know. Um, so, Mr. Conroe, though, was unfortunately struck down uh, with a heart attack in class just a few years after I left high school. 
And I was always really sad about that because I was a fireman when I was in high school and I was pretty well trained in first aid. And I always wonder how I'd been there, if I could have, you know, revived him or whatever. Um, but a lot of, you know, the, 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 the jokes uh, that some of the students made about Mr. Conroe's death after he died was pretty horrible. I don't understand why being strict uh, seems to make you a bad teacher to some people. But he's the one who's always going to stick in my memory. He's the one who had the best stories to tell about his own life as they related to uh, geology and different parts of the world where he had been um, uh, looking for rocks and fossils and whatever. And um, he was just generally the most engaging, even though we used to argue all the time when I would ask questions or I would try to make points, which, you know, now that I'm older, I see we're probably a bit stupid. But at the time, I was perfectly serious. Um, for example, one time I got into this argument with him uh, saying that I, I, I insisted that there's no such thing as numbers. And he's like, what do you mean no, there's no such thing as numbers? I said, well, you know, science is all very well. but And I was a total atheist when I was a kid, by the way, just like I am now. But I was like, science is all very well, but the thing is it all rests on mathematics, and mathematics is not real because there really aren't numbers. He's like, what do you mean there really aren't numbers? And I'm like, well, uh, numbers are a human concept, you know. Basically, there are no numbers. There's just a whole bunch of ones. And he's like, what do you mean? And I said, well, there's no two of anything that are exactly alike. You know, no two drops of water will have it exactly the same molecular composition. Uh, no two flakes of snow are the same. No two grains of sand are the same. No two stars are the same. No two people are the same. You know, no two blades of grass are exactly the same. And... Uh, we had such an argument about it. I said, so, you know, even though we use numbers for convenience sake, in fact, there's just, you know, an infinite number of ones. And, um, <laughs> uh, boy, we really, really, really went round and round. We wasted an entire class arguing about whether or not there were numbers. Um, I don't even know what the rest of the students were thinking, and frankly, I didn't care. Um, Anyway, uh, so yeah, that's my story about my favorite teacher. I think a good teacher who engages the students will not just be remembered for who they are as a teacher, but also you will remember the information that that teacher is trying to convey. I mean, I know more about you know fossils and stuff than most of the other stuff I learned about in high school, and that's because I was paying more attention in that class, and that's because it was an engaging experience, thanks to a good teacher. And I can also say for sure that I know that Mr. Conroe was one of those teachers who felt very strongly that being a teacher was a noble profession, that it was something that you were doing for the community and for the future. He really was. I mean, there really are people out there like that. They're not necessarily just holding down jobs and having coffee breaks, you know. I mean, teachers are real people who have a real impact on our society, and they ought to be valued for that and respected for that and not just with videos of kind words and remembrance but with money and pensions truly if teachers aren't worth a decent salary why are the people who get a lot of money worth you know i mean what teachers do for the future affects everyone not just the few but the many so teachers need everyone's support this is Got That Funk. Thanks for watching, and may all your ups and downs be ups.